After weeks of waiting, we finally picked our camper up from the shop. And then we turned right around and took it back. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, you'll certainly live amazing if you actually have your camper and can use it and that it's not stuck in the shop somewhere. <laughs> As longtime viewers will know, we were out of our camper for a while because of an accident that, uh, that we got into. So a quick recap, we had an accident, um, I guess a couple months ago, we drove 1,200 miles to this dealer, which is Blue Dog RV yep. in Post Falls, Idaho. We will definitely have some tips for you about when you pick your camper up from the shop because if you own a camper, the chances are good at some point it will go in the shops. So one of the things that we were really pleased was they let us stay in our RV for some weeks, you know, mm -hmm. until the parts came in. Yep. So let's talk about, first of all, the repairs that we had done, and then we'll get to why we had to take it back. Because of a tail swing accident that I caused, um, I took the back corner, mainly the back wall, a corner of the back wall. $25,000 yes, worth yeah, of damage. Yes, 25,000, <laughs> not 2,500. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank goodness for insurance. Luckily, they didn't have to take the back wall off. They were able to cut a square section out of the back wall and, and get in there and repair the, the aluminum frame that's behind the fiberglass. They had to cut a section of that out and weld in a new section of frame to give it the structural integrity that it needs. And then they put the fiberglass work over that, the plywood and fiberglass over that. Right, and we were pleased because it was a minimally invasive repair. There was a chance that they might have to um, take the whole back wall off, which means that they were going to get into the where the roof meets the back wall, but they didn't have to do that. So that's that was a major plus. And then they used this product that was flexible because, you know, these rigs flex and they use this mm -hmm. flexible stuff. In the automotive world, you use something called glazing putty. And the stuff that they use in the RV industry, and it flexes without, without cracking and popping off. I saw it in the process just after they had put a coat of it on. They did a re very nice job. Right. So the rig is ready and we look at it and we're pleased with how the finish work is. It looks good. Now, I do have to say it does not look 100% like it was before. Right. And this is a tip for you just to kind of prepare you if you have any work done. You can't expect it to look like nothing happened. Yeah, I mean, I would like, I would like it if they, if it was, you know, seamless, if they, if you couldn't see it. But if you're looking for it, you'll you'll see the the spot. Hopefully, you don't have an accident like I had and cause major body damage. But it happens. Well, uh, even service, you're, you may need to get it serviced. And that brings me to tip number two: is when you go to pick your camper up. You definitely want to check everything and walk around. If they've done anything inside, you want to check that. You want to look at everything and just make sure it's to your liking and that it's done. And if you can test it in the dealer lot, then definitely test it. So anyway, so we did a walkthrough mm -hmm. and we checked it. The outside and everything looked good. And we hitched up and then we headed out and what happened? Well, as we were pulling out, you said turn on the lights to activate the rear camera, and I'd already turned the lights on, and there was no rear camera. So we pulled over. We went about a quarter of a mile and found a spot where we could pull over. We got out, and we noticed that the whole back wall, the lights, the markers up on top, the taillights were not working. Mm -hmm. So back we went. That's right. And they were on it. Um, you know, we really are pleased with Blue Dog because they got right on it and they tested. One of the first things they did was test our truck to rule out that our truck didn't have a problem. No, the only problem it had was, was it had blown a fuse. That mm -hmm. indicated a short, of course. And, and then they, they got on it and, and we tried to work on it out in the, in the entry area and, and it became pretty obvious that it was going to need a little more extensive work than that so they I dropped the trailer and and they came in with their forklift and took it into the shop right you don't want to have an agenda or a timeline where you need to get on the road you have somewhere to be for us we had reserved a campground 10 miles away and we had an agreement with them that if we didn't make it that night that's fine they would you know we just need to call them and we could go the next night yeah, at that point we weren't sure if we were going to be going back to the, the to the place where we were staying or living in the camper that night. 
Right. <laughs> so you just want to have that flexibility so that you don't feel like you're in a corner and that you have to take the rig and it's not yeah. ready. Yeah. So the whole process actually was four hours because when we got it back, the lights worked, but... The camera still didn't work. And we're like, oh, goodness. What had happened is that they had found that they had reversed the wires on the, the work that they had done below. They needed to, to flip the wires, B-plus and ground wires, and the camera came back to life. Yep, so that was really good, and <laughs> we were on our way. And then we get back to the uh, campground, and we get set up, mm -hmm. and we, in the process of doing all this work, I said, we talked about... Uh, putting in a washer dryer combo and and we did mm -hmm. and it's it's great it's we this was our gift to ourselves we have been doing laundry most of you know we're full timers we've been on the road for two and a half years and been doing laundry at laundromats for yep. two and a half years yep. so this was our treat to ourselves with all the stress and everything and there will definitely be an upcoming video comparing you know laundromat to washer dryer in, right. in the rig because right. there's going to be pros and cons for both Yes. So so that night, we yeah, did we, laundry. We ran a load of laundry through, mm -hmm. and, and everything seemed to be fine. And the next morning, we're, get, uh, we're getting ready to go somewhere, and, and uh, I notice a line of water at the bottom of the carpet uh, in front of the closet. Uh-oh. And I knew what that meant. I yanked the washer out, and sure enough, they had stripped the uh, stops, the things with the valves on them, and they had stripped those by putting the hoses on cockeyed, which meant that the stops were, I could no longer use them. So this brings us to another tip. I mentioned camping close by. Mm -hmm. You want to plan on being close by on a business day, because if you need to call them after having your camper back a day or two, you want to have, you know, to be able to reach them. You know, mm -hmm. if we picked it up on a Friday night and it was a weekend, then we'd be stuck here waiting until a business day again. Liz called and and um, and basically told them that they were going to bring the stops out to <laughs> us, and and they did. And they did. They were so nice. I mean, we we really appreciate that. With after everything we'd been through the day before and just the whole thing, you know, here we were on the home stretch. And they did not let us down on the very last bit. They came out with the correct part, stayed and made sure, you know, for a long time, right. actually was here for right. a good while, making sure that, you know, the laundry was working and that the water was draining and yeah. that there was, there was actually two problems and both of them yeah. were fixed. Yep. Yeah. Just in case you have an RV that is washer dryer ready, on the drain pipe, there is a diaphragm. I don't know what you want to call it. It's, a, it's, it's like a funnel. It's like a sleeve, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't insert the, the drain pipe from the washer into that sleeve, it's going to just bubble out over the top. Yeah, it's got to go through this it's diaphragm. It's actually got to go into the diaphragm. And when we, were, when we put it back in to do our test run, we were out here talking, and, and uh, you went in and... and, and quickly said we've got a big problem <laughs> we've got a flood yeah and yeah. and yeah we had soapy water bubbling out of the top of the drain pipe and yeah it was a mess we're very happy with blue dog they did a, a great job um considering the circumstances and we're very happy with with what they've done they were worth the 1200 mile drive that yeah. we took to yeah. have them to take care of it we love that they were on it with you know this not being quite right we understand that things like that happen mm -hmm. well we're glad that's behind us uh definitely want to hear your camper repair stories they're probably epic too yep and uh hope you guys get out here and uh, get some camping in yeah we want to see you in the campground man this is just so great oh look at that one mm-hmm